Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Bierman here for another art project for the week. And I was inspired by the beautiful sunshiny weekend this week that we saw. We had sun every day and it just warmed my spirit. So sun all around for this week. So we're going to do a very colorful, sunshiny landscape with different types of lines for today. It'll be a pretty quick one. And all you need is a white sheet of paper and then any type of coloring material that you would like. I personally like paint the best because it's nice and bright and vibrant. So if you have watercolor paints or temper paints or even craft paints, any of those would work. But if you don't have those, don't worry. Markers, crayons, colored pencil, any of those things will do just fine. I happen to be starting with a black Sharpie. Um, you could do that also. If you're going to paint, do use something that um, won't bleed or run. So if you are going to use watercolor paint, I would use a Sharpie for the black line or maybe a, um, a black crayon or a black oil pastel. If you're going to use like a marker, like a Mr. Sketch marker or a watercolor marker. Remember, if those get wet again, those that black will spread into your other colors. So just think about what you want to use and what will be best for you. Um, again, you don't need to have a Sharpie. Um, you can do this with a black crayon and that would be totally fine too. So here we go. So if you look at your paper, here's the bottom of your paper and here's the top of your paper. As you're working, I want you to start with your land or water lines. So I'm going to use most of my cool colors down here in the front. So I'm thinking like grass or water and you could do just straight lines, but if it's going to if it'll add um, like waves to your artwork, you can certainly do bumpy lines or curvy lines, wavy lines, any of those things. I wish I had a thicker Sharpie at home, but I'm going to um, use my Sharpie on its side to make the thickest lines that I can. If you're using a crayon or a colored pencil, you might just want to thicken those lines up by going back over top of them and making those thicker for yourself. That is completely up to you. You do not have to have these thick lines. I just like to have that barrier there, especially if I'm going to paint so that my colors um, don't mix. Um, once you have that down, you can start, you could add um, another less curvy line or a more curvy line. If you know you want it to look like water, you've learned all these different types of lines. So you could use wavy lines, you could even do loop-de-loo lines, whatever you would like to do. So I'm gonna end with another one. I've put some here close together, some further apart, but I've gone ahead and added my horizontal landscape or water lines. So at this point, I've taken up about a third of my paper. It's about one of my hands, maybe a little bit more, but I still have a quite a large area up here because for me, the sun is the most important part. So I'm leaving a little bit more space. So from there, I'm thinking about where the middle of my paper is and I'm going to add a nice large curve shape and this is representing my setting or rising sun. So I have left some space on either side. And then I want you to think about adding five vertical or diagonal lines from your center sun. Now, I'm going to kind of find the center here, but where my center is, I'm going to make a little mark on the right and a little mark on the left, and those are where my lines are going to start. So I'm going to bring my line up diagonally, one here and one here. So this is where my kind of the center of my sun rays are going to be. I'm gonna add four more on the right and four more on the left. You could do more, you could do less. That is up to you. One, two, one, two. So I'm gonna do three and then four. But again, yes, you can do more or less, whatever works for you. Um, if you have lots of colors, like if you have one of those big boxes of crayons or tons of colored pencils or different color paints, you might decide you want more lines so you can add more color. So at this point, you're going to just start coloring. Um, I'm going to just show you 
what I would do. Now you can do your sun rays any colors that you'd like to, and you certainly don't have to do a pattern. They can all be different. Um, really, you could do them all the same. Um, I do hope that you do add a few different colors. But if you want to think about all the warm colors that we talk about in art class, the warm colors represent that warmth, that the sunshine, the heat, um, sometimes we talk about colors of a fire, but my warm colors are going to be yellow, orange, and red. Um, you can also think about the colors in between, like yellow, orange, and red, orange. So those are some other options, especially with crayons or with paint. Um, sometimes I add pink into the mix as well. Um, and that, again, that is up to you. But you can work with maybe just two warm colors or three warm colors and create yourself some sort of pattern. Remember that marker usage? We talked about that in one of our last projects. Remember if you have these thick markers, you wanna to try to create these nice thick stripes of color going in the same direction. And I know some of you, when you're coloring, you think that scribbling is the best way to go and it goes really fast. But to be honest, if you do these nice thick strokes, if you find the thick side of your marker and create and fill in that way, it actually does not use up any more time. So I think for this one, I'm going to do a yellow orange pattern all the way down. But if you looked at, or if you saw the first one that I completed, I did kind of rainbow order as I went, or color wheel order. So I started in the middle with yellow, I went to yellow orange, to orange, to red, and then I kept going down into my sunset or sunrise, and I went from red to red violet, to violet, to blue, and then I used my cool colors there in the front. So you can fill this in however you would like to. I would just like to give you a quick reminder, if you're using paint especially, especially paint, you always wanna work with your weakest colors first. And we usually find that yellow is our weakest warm color. So I always like to start with my yellow first. Once you move down, if you wanna fill the, the rest of that in with the cool colors, um, it doesn't really matter what order you go in. Um, so that is completely up to you. Remember, you can always combine different mediums. So if you use marker up at the top, don't be afraid to use crayon down here at the bottom or paint down here at the bottom. If you have a bigger paintbrush like I do, especially with these nice wide lines, you can actually finish this much quicker than what I did with the markers. But again, that is a total personal preference. You use whatever you like best. Um, and go ahead and just have fun finishing this up. To me, when it's all done, especially if you can get the nice thick black line, it almost reminds me of like a stained glass. So once you finish this, it should be a nice, beautiful, bright piece of artwork. So please share it with someone or give it to somebody, hang it in a spot where everybody can see because you'll be you'll end with a really beautiful piece of brightly colored art that is sure to cheer up and brighten anyone's day. So that's it for today. Have a wonderful Monday and I'll see you next week with a new project. Bye everybody. Enjoy creating.